We're in Southern California at Viasat's headquarters. I'm here with Mark. He's the CEO of the company. Mark, great to see you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. So just tell us about Viasat, uh, the, the company, uh, what kind of services it provides and to who? So we're a, a broadband communications company. Most of the communication services that we deliver are through satellite. We're a provider of satellite services and technology uh, that we'll provide to other people who use satellites as well. We're generally going to provide you know, high-speed broadband communications to places that are difficult to connect. So examples of that would be in-flight connectivity, that's one of our large businesses, connections at sea, uh, we provide government uh, services. Okay. And then one of our most exciting ones now is connecting the unconnected in emerging markets. So going to places, usually towns and villages that are remote, occasionally in cities that have no or poor service and provide broadband connectivity, usually through Wi-Fi and very affordable prices. Are you a vertically integrated company in business as well as technology terms? Yeah, we're probably the most vertically integrated company in the satellite space. So we're vertically integrated from a technology perspective. The technology that's needed to deliver the speeds that we deliver at the, and the volumes of bandwidth at the price points that we do just weren't available. So we've had to invent all that technology, ranging from payloads in space to the microwave devices that go in a, in a small satellite terminal or in a router. Kind of, you know, just at a, a relatively straightforward, this is the technology we need to provide these services, or are you pushing boundaries? Are you innovating in what can happen in the satellite space? Oh yeah, we're pushing boundaries for sure. If you look at the satellite space, for dozens of years, basically most of the history of satellite, satellite really provided broadcast services, which is kind of the opposite of data, unicast services. Right. So with broadcast, you want small numbers of large beams reaching everywhere, same content. With data, you want actually the opposite. You want the smallest beams you can make, reuse spectrum over and over again, and get the most throughput that you can through the satellites. And so when we started uh, uh, trying to be in this area, there was no technology really to do that. Okay. We, so what we've done is we, we actually built a, a facility. It's in Phoenix, Arizona. We were building really the first all solid state satellite. So instead of using microwave components like you might have seen in cell towers in the 80s and 90s, really we're developing all solid state devices, getting rid of those big, big you know, vacuum tubes with big power supplies, okay. all of the mixers and all those components we're having to develop ourselves, putting in payloads, and then build all the ground networks that can support all those many, many beams. So technologies that you're seeing come into mobile networks or in 5G like virtualization, software-defined networks, we've had to pioneer all those things in the satellite space in order to deliver at the scale that we're doing. I know like any broadband service, it'll be variable. But, but what kind of broadband speed can you deliver to, to customers on the ground? What, be, what would be the top end? Okay, so with our latest satellite, we, uh, we deliver services that are uh, up to 100 megabits per second okay. on a, for a, let's say for a home. If you're a residential customer, you can buy a broadband plan that's uh, rated to 100 megabits per second. In order to deliver that, that satellite will deliver download speeds of uh, 300 megabits per second or more, okay. so in a shared environment. The new satellites that we're working on will have download speeds into a small terminal uh, in the range of a gigabit per second. Wow. So that gives a sense of, of what's possible with these satellites. Okay. Our plans are we have three global satellites or a three satellite constellation under construction okay. where we're building the payloads ourselves, but those three satellites will give us full global coverage. So we'll be able, we're, our intent is, and we think there's a market for these services to be delivered all around the world. You know, so many of us have been connected for a very long time and are very used to having internet services, but it's still the case that a, a large volume of the global population is still not connected in any way whatsoever. So what are you doing to try and help, you know, bring the people who currently don't have access to any internet or any kind of voice service, what are you doing to help, you know, bridge that gap and close that divide? Estimates are that there's about four billion people that are not connected. And, and there's kind of two main causes. One would be for uh, economic, people who are within range of, say, wireless, but really don't have either the interest for it or the money to, to buy that. Right. The other one, and this is a big part of the market, are people who are simply out of range. Yeah. 
And we, we think those two problems are interrelated. And so our objective is to be able to start with people who are outside of the footprints of traditional coverage, whether it's telephone or, or wireless, and provide service that's affordable. So in mar emerging markets like Mexico, we can provide internet access for as little as 50 cents an hour for connectivity to a broadband. And what's really, what's really interesting is those people know what to do. Okay. And then uh, in, in these kind of markets, what kind of companies are you partnering with to, to get this service to the actual end user? Yeah, that's a good question because one of the issues in these rural markets is that they're just literally difficult to get to. It may be in mountainous regions. And so there are, there are logistics and operational issues. So the way we'll do it is we'll put up a small satellite terminal, Wi-Fi hotspot, and that'll cover say a store or an internet cafe, and then ex exterior coverage that'll go for hundreds of meters generally around that store. So we'll need people that go through these towns to pick out a good site, install the terminal, make sure that it's still operated, operating. And so we'll partner with companies that have other businesses in these areas. And they may be, they may be providing goods to the store. They may be helping people with the cash economy and doing things like paying rent or paying for a vehicle. Uh, those are the types of partners that are already in these towns, and they, they're extremely enthusiastic about making connectivity available in there and doing the things that we need them to do to make this possible. Well, great. That's a fascinating story you've got here at Viasat, and it'd be great to catch up in the future and see how things are developing because you're obviously pushing, like you said, pushing the boundaries on technology and service revision and connecting those unconnected. So, Mark, thanks very much for speaking to us today. Well, thanks for having us. I really appreciate the opportunity.